So what I want to get at is that dealing with uh, fractions with algebra, algebraic fractions, is exactly the same as dealing with fractions with just numbers in them. All the same rules apply. So for this first one, we've got x plus 5, x plus 1 over x plus 1, x plus 7. The fact is that if I can spot that there is a common factor to the numerator and denominator, which there is, this x plus 1, that means I can cancel through by a common factor. So I can cancel the x plus 1s and I'd be left with x plus 5 over x plus 7. Now the fact that I haven't written uh, the brackets around those doesn't make any difference. It's taken to mean that the brackets are there. Uh, you can write the brackets around them if you prefer. Now for number two, um, we've got something that looks absolutely horrible. But once again, you're looking for a common factor to both the numerator and denominator. Now the common factor must be common to all four terms that are there. There are four. There's this bit here, that bit there, that one, and that one. Okay, So there's four pieces. Those pluses and minuses that we have there separate the terms out. So if I'm going to divide through this fraction by a common factor, it must be common to all pieces, the whole of the numerator and the whole of the denominator. Now, the x plus 2s appear in all four. So that must mean that I can cancel through the x plus 2s. Now, the x plus 5s there appear in the numerator into that term and that term. But because the x plus 5 doesn't appear there or there, it is not a common factor of the whole numerator or the whole denominator. And so I can't cancel through by it. Okay, It must be common to all of the top and all of the bottom. So if I multiply out, we've got three lots of x plus 5, so 3x plus 15. I've got minus 7 times minus x, so plus 7x, and minus 7 times 4, so minus 28. All over, two lots of x plus 5, so 2x plus 10, and 3x plus 4, so 3x plus 12. So simplifying, 3x plus 7x is 10x, 15 take away 28 is minus 13. And I have 5x uh, plus 22 in the denominator. Now, I would then check, is there something I can divide through top and bottom? Is there a common factor to the numerator and denominator? There isn't in this case, so I can't cancel it any further. Right, now let's have a look at number 3. So... What have we got? Well, we've got this uh, x plus 2, which is common to both uh, the numerator and denominator as factors. But we've actually got x plus 2 to the 4, which is common to the both, because this is x plus 2 five times. That's x plus 2 four times. So I can cancel four x plus 2s from the numerator and denominator. So I can cancel out four from there and all of the 4 from there, and so I'm just left with an, a single x plus 2 in the numerator. Now, the x squared minus 1, OK, now that is the difference of two squares. So I could actually rewrite that as x minus 1, x plus 1. So I actually have x plus 1 times x plus 1 to the 3 in the numerator. So that's x plus 1 to the 1 times x plus 1 to the 3. So I have x plus 1 to the 4 in the numerator. So ignore that one, and I can bring that up to 4. I've got x minus 1 in the numerator and x minus 1 to the 6 in the denominator. So an x minus 1 can be cancelled from numerator and denominator. So that one can go. And I can drop 1 from the denominator. So what I have left is x plus 2 and x plus 1 to the 4. x minus 1 to the 5 
add x plus 3. And that is as far as I can go simplifying. OK, so these are using much the same rules as we saw in the previous video. OK, um, exactly the same process each and every time. And we're going to go through more examples of this in the next video.